Welcome to our mini guide to speaking and appearing at public events and how to handle participant data and GDPR. What does GDPR cover? Well, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulations, were brought into effect in the UK as the Data Protection Act. But the word data can mean different things to different people. In this context, data is information about living individuals in the EU or the UK that allows them to be identified. So it's not confined to their name and address. It might be two or three different factors that mean if you put them together, you can identify them. But when we're dealing with participants at an event, it's normally their name and their email address at the very least that we are dealing with. In this context, the delegate is known as the data subject. They are the people whose data may be passing from registration to event organiser and sometimes to you. In this context, if you get any information about the individual people at the event, the data processor is you because receiving that information and reading it, even if you do nothing else with it, comes under the heading of processing data. You don't have to edit it or use it in order to be processing it. And the event organiser is the data controller. They are the people primarily responsible for making sure that all the GDPR docs are in a row. You can't just randomly share personal data between an event organiser and you. This can be done with consent from the individuals who are coming to the event if they know that information is going to be given to you. This can be done on the basis of legitimate interest. That is a, a legitimate interest in handing this data, but it doesn't mean you can do whatever you like with information. And the event organiser's legitimate interest would not include sharing it with you without letting the delegates know this is happening and why it is necessary. And it can be on the basis of a contractual arrangement with the delegate. So if they've said we will get so and so to come and work with you in a private group and we in order to do that, they need the following information about you and therefore we will be passing it on to them. And this is part of what you're paying for. Then that would come under a contractual arrangement with the delegate. This is highly unlikely at a multi speaker, multi coaching public event. Check before you use data about delegates what the event registration said. If it doesn't, name your organisation as a third party with whom information is going to be shared. You should not use this data without getting consent from the delegates directly. You can also look at the joining instructions. If the joining instructions say, in order to deliver what you've asked for, we're going to need to send the following information to the following people, and your name is there, as long as you're only accessing that information, you should be okay. As long as your reason for accessing it is to deliver the event. This does not cover you for adding to a newsletter or marketing at a later stage. When it comes to newsletters, the easiest thing to do, rather than get data from the event organiser, is to have a link on your slides or a way that people can sign themselves up. We have had a lot of fuss about whether this should be double opted in or not, but the reality is you have to be prepared to show that these people consented to be on your newsletter list, if that's what you want to do. Double opt-in is a relatively easy way of doing this, but there are other ways. Depends on what email platform you use and how you go about things. However, whatever you do, make sure that people have an easy way to unsubscribe. Nothing irritates anyone more than getting a whole series of unwanted newsletters when you have no way of stopping them coming. And by the way, 
the early results from purely self sign up opted in newsletters is that whilst the sign up rate is low, the response rates can be way, way higher. So it's worthwhile reviewing your newsletter strategy and making sure that when people sign up to your newsletter, you give them a link to your data privacy policy because now you're the data controller because from here on in, you're deciding what you're collecting and why. If GDPR's been making your head hurt, don't worry. If you treat delegates data with respect and secure it and don't share it, or receive it inappropriately, all should be well.